Welcome to Make Parts Fast Masterclass. Today's video covers tips on making the case for using 3D printing for tooling. Now, we were talking a little bit earlier, and you have an interesting take on the segmentation of the additive manufacturing market. Can you go into that in a little more detail? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's lots of discussion about 3D printing and additive manufacturing and where it fits and all that stuff. And, and I kind of break it up into three segments. There's the prototyping space, which I refer to as kind of an understood market, not a, not a mature market, but understood. So being able to use something like our Connex machine for if I'm Apple or Trek bicycles or whoever, and I'm trying to design my product. It's kind of an understood market and there's lots of technologies and we kind of look at our Connex as the Cadillac for that. Then there's end use part manufacturing, which clearly gets a lot of buzz. And you know, I'm holding up a piece uh, from Normal Ears. This, these are actual custom printed earbuds. Um, and it's, a, it's obviously a unique product specific to, to my ears. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. And, and you see lots of discussions about that. It's kind of the holy grail. And you see a lot about it in the media. And it's great. But there's a part in the middle, the third segment, called tooling uh, jigs and fixtures, which you don't hear a lot about, that I think actually has a huge advantage for people for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I can get into the additive manufacturing space with simple ROI. I have some tangible uh, examples that I can show you for that. But more importantly, it gets someone into the additive game. So let me explain a little bit more. Yeah. The parts I have here, these are, this is a, uh, a part that actually BMW uses for their manufacturing floor. It's a CNC part. Um, it's used to put the emblem on the car. Looks neat. I don't know the exact cost, but let's just say this was about $1,000 and took them three weeks to produce. It's, you know, it's used by an employee on the manufacturing floor. Serves a purpose, neat. If I now take that same component, and I print it on an FDM machine, this is probably about 25% uh, the weight of the original metal part. Uh, it doesn't damage the car. It's more ergonomic for the person actually doing it. And instead of taking three weeks to get this, it took me a day, and it probably was 10% of the cost of the CNC one. So I can walk down a manufacturing floor today and pick out 10 examples of this for any manufacturer that they can get tangible ROI now. And that's cool, and it's, and it's a neat thing. But what's more important about it is, you know, the end use part like normal ears isn't available for everybody yet. The, the technology hasn't progressed. Uh, it is in aerospace and other things, but for the classic million widgets, technology is not there yet. But manufacturers are thinking about how do I get into the additive game? Well, jigs, fixtures, and tooling allows them to get in with a tangible ROI. They see benefit right away. But even more importantly for that, they're actually utilizing the technology. They understand where the black marks are, are for additive. They know what its capabilities are, what its capabilities aren't. They're in the game now, so when the pr technology progresses and someone up top says to them, we need to start doing more with additive, they understand and they can guide their company the best way. So it's kind of a win-win situation, and I think it's an important component, an important area of the market that no one's talking about because it's just not sexy. So, but we, our customers are seeing great value, and we hope your readership looks at it, whether it's us or our competitors, we think additive can really help on the jigs, fixtures, and tooling side. 